December 13th, 2015, the Game Theorists uploaded a video that would go on to change the community and the world of Five Nights at Freddy's. Titled FNAF, The Clue That Solves Five Nights at Freddy's, this video presented the potential for everything we see in FNAF 1, 2, and 3 to be a dream. A grandfather clock, chiming the same song every time. Why would the end of my shift in an office be signaled by a grandfather clock chime? It wouldn't, unless I was asleep, dreaming in my house, with a grandfather clock right outside my room. Just like the layout of- A dream that the bite victim had every night, based on his plushies, on the toy chica without the beak, the mangle, the plush trap, the golden suits, and their shadows. This theory at the time was mind-blowing to everyone because it changed everything that we knew about the games, but today I'm going to present you a new idea specifically about Security Breach that could be a turning point for us as theorists. Before we begin, thank you to these guys for presenting the idea, to this guy for sharing all of the evidence and compiling it all and stuff, and to this guy for sharing it with me. So this isn't a similar theory in the way that everything is a dream and it's not a theory that I think ruins the game. If anything, I think it makes the storyline a little bit stronger and actually gives reasoning to a lot of the things that we see in Security Breach. I think it's similar to dream theory in the regards that it's a theory that attempts to explain the entirety of Security Breach rather than small little parts in it. This is the simulation theory. It sounds a lot cooler than it is. If you don't know what a simulation is, look no further than Cassidy in Princess Quest. That isn't a representation of Cassidy or a parallel to Cassidy. That is quite literally Cassidy's soul trapped inside of the arcade machine. The song that plays in the game is called Caught in a Loop, which could be evidence showing that Cassidy is living in this digital world with no foreseeable escape. And that's what a simulation is, the theory that everything is constructed by something above us that is controlling us like a video game. And that is where Security Breach comes in. What if Gregory was also stuck in a loop, and that the events of Security Breach as we play them are simply a simulation? Gregory's simulated loop would consist of his actual memories in the Pizzaplex, that way Princess Quest could be a microcosm and a subtle hint showing us the true nature of the world that we are exploring. But before we talk about all the evidence, let's talk about whether this is hypothetically even possible in this universe. Now this theory actually came up because of one of the Lally's Game stories, which I won't spoil because the book isn't even out yet. Um, but if you've read the book, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, it's pretty clear. Uh, other than that, emails in FNAF AR seem to make it clear that Vanessa was almost in, a, in another world when she had her face close to the screen, and of course, Jeremy also ended up cutting his face off due to the effects of the game Glitchtrap's control. I think it's totally plausible for Gregory to be stuck in some kind of loop, so let's talk about the actual evidence for it. Firstly, we all know that Gregory is a special character in some way, whether he is a robot or a bite victim, patient 46, whatever you believe to be true, Gregory's existence is significant. That alone is shown on the arcade game screens where Gregory is clearly the person in the top spot and by a long way too. Also recall the wall code in the sister location room which clearly predicts everything that happens in the game. Dodge, duck, flash, shoot, crawl, run, crush the vile band. It also says drawn to life not real, as if it is a looping simulation. Additionally, Gregory could be the one who actually attempted to solve the arcade conspiracy. It could just be a past version of himself in the loop, realizing there could be a way out. Princess Quest 2, it won't boot properly. No idea why, shuts down when I try to play it, like it's a personal attack. Doesn't matter anyway, I still haven't found Princess Quest 1. They're working together. The arcades, they're hiding something, the glitches. Glitch them all at the same time, then the princess will recognize me. She's testing me. I'm not yet worthy. The others are protecting it. Let me stay, I'm so close. Just, just one more night, please, I can save the princess. On another note, if Gregory was in fact the bite victim, not only would it somewhat explain where he went and how he is important to the story, but it would also parallel or even better show us the actual events of FNAF World and FNAF 3's minigames. Balloon Boy's Air Adventure and Chica's Party World are pretty much remastered in Security Breach, and better yet, they have glitches in them too. 
And with the bite victim having complete control in how he spreads the breadcrumbs, basically, this would mean his mission in saving the princess gives Cassidy her happiest day, but now we've gone off topic. <laughs> now, one of the duffel bag messages shows that the Pizzaplex had an unknown emergency call at the police. This has zero meaning in the game and was just put there for the sake of being there. Unless, of course, Gregory was the one who made the call in a previous loop. What else could Gregory have done in a previous loop then? Well, he could have literally killed Monty. There's a message saying that probably in a previous cycle, someone knocked Monty down in the exact same way that we do it in the game. He could have written all those post-it notes. Heck, in all this time, he could have learned to actually write words instead of just scribbling like a child at the beginning. In terms of Vanny and the lack of Glitchtrap's appearance, I don't think that Gregory actually knows that Vanny and Vanessa are even the same and that Glitchtrap is an actual thing. Additionally, Burn Trap may look completely different to how we last saw Afton because this is what Gregory remembers him looking like. It's kind of all in his, all in his mind, kind of as a memory simulated. It, this is a weird theory to explain. This could be evidence or this could just be theorists making excuses for what they don't like in Security Breach. Either way, it's interesting. <laughs> On top of all of this, not a whole lot of concepts in Security Breach actually make sense. Did it ever get explained that there are these invisible CDs lurking around the Pizzaplex? That makes zero sense um, in like the real world, but in FNAF VR with the tapes, you know, it, it's kind of like the same thing. What about cardboard cutouts whose eyes glow when you flash them with your flashlight? When you're in a simulation, literally anything is possible, and after a long time has passed, you'll probably start to see some weird things as you devolve more into madness. Okay, now we get onto the really cool stuff that actually has me excited for this theory. Remember how the hype for Security Breach all started? It started with Freddy and Friends on tour episodes. Now, let's listen back to the song. We're jumping in a rock until the sun goes down And the moon is shining forever and ever Forever and ever and ever. Those are the words that are repeated so many times in the song. And in the game, it's repeated forever and ever, right next to the wall code. It has some sort of importance, right? And if you thought that was good, why don't we take another look back at the poster for the upcoming Ruin DLC, which shows multiple perspectives of Gregory with one in front of a static screen saying help. Yes, he needs help because he's stuck in this never ending loop in a simulation with no hope of escape. What if our mission in this DLC is to find out what truly happened in the real life Pizzaplex and to save Gregory from the torture that is security breach? Let's bring all of this together and make a conclusion. There's flaws to this theory, but there's definitely evidence. I'm not fully convinced yet, but I'll tell you this much. This is such an interesting idea and to me would be a very satisfying explanation to Security Breach. I guess we're gonna have to wait until Ruin comes out to see how real the game truly was. But uh, until then, keep reading the books, keep theorizing and keep sharing with me what you think. That is it for now. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the future. Goodbye.